On this episode of All American, watch as I elaborate on required instinctive reactions to an emergency situation. Number two, prop lever back to the feather position. Nearly a quarter of a century ago, I found myself driving down a dirt road that led to my hometown airport for my very first flight. I never dreamed it would lead to such amazing adventures, and now it's time to share. The Piper Apache is a wonderful light twin training aircraft. This particular one is a 1955 model and is in really great shape. One of my main goals in aviation is to try to do everything I possibly can to help improve overall safety as well as make a difference in promoting this glorious freedom. For takeoff checklist is complete. I see runway 33 on the runway in the mag compass on the directional gyro. Twenty inches. Gauges are in the green. Here we go, two good engines. Temple traffic 1140, pop is rolling, 33 three, Temple. Their speed's alive. BMC. Positive rate, gear's coming up. As I climb up to altitude, I will share with you what I hope to achieve on this episode. First, I selected this particular emergency procedure because it's safe and easy to demonstrate if properly executed. It also demonstrates several steps that require immediate instinctive reactions as well as some decision making factors that must be accomplished in order to maintain aircraft control. Second, if you are pursuing a multi-engine rating, you will have to do a full engine shutdown, feather, and restart in accordance with the ACS. Before doing anything like this, make sure you're with a qualified and proficient instructor and adhere to the multi-engine considerations found in Appendix 6, Safety of Flight of the ACS. To summarize this safety directive, when practicing these required procedures, the applicant must be within power off gliding distance of the designated airport. For some of the older light twin airplanes without unfeathering accumulators, inability to unfeather has and can occur. While rare, if this situation does occur, the aircraft must be able to fly to the designated airport on one engine. In that case, an emergency must be declared and handled exactly as so. In an emergency, the primary consideration is aircraft control. All other tasks are subordinate to this requirement. Time may not allow for usage of a checklist in said situation, therefore deliberate training and proficiency should be dedicated to accomplishing immediate action items in order to continue flying the airplane. Apache 1140 Papa, spoke 0144, not there. 0144 Apache 1140 Papa. November 82075, contact Waco Approach 127.65, you have a safe flight. 27465, 0075, thank you. Around 1140, Papa, radar contact, a mile and a half southwest of Temple, verify altitude 3600, ground center is 3036. Altitude checks climbing through uh, 3800 now, 3036, Apache 1140, Papa. Alright, so we're over the Temple Airport, we're talking the gray, we're at 4500, which is sufficient altitude. I'm going to put ourselves in a left-hand orbit over the Temple Airport. 
And the reason that is, is I'm gonna fail the right engine. Now, in most cases, during multi-engine training, you'll fail the critical, which is what this airplane has, the left engine, or the number one engine. But the hydraulic pump for the gear is on the left engine, so we're not gonna shut down that and induce a gear emergency if for some reason I'm unable to get the engine unfettered in flight. So, for safety practices, we're just going to shut down the number two, or the right engine, and demonstrate this procedure. So we're within power off gliding distance for both engines, failing to the airport. I'm going to put myself in a left orbit, over the field. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to switch the fuel selector on this to off. And what you're going to notice is that the fuel pressure is going to drop off. And it's important for any kind of emergency, there we go, there's the engine, to understand the symptoms and the systems of the aircraft so that you can diagnose the problem. So right now, it's very clear that we've experienced an engine failure because of the change in engine noise and the sudden loss of power. As you notice, the tack is still up there around 1800, but the manifold pressure is still up there. So, first things first, when you have an, an engine malfunction, or any kind of malfunction for that matter. Number one, fly the airplane. So, I'm banking into the operating engine. I'm maintaining direction control. I'm applying left rudder. Make sure as required, props come in full forward. Now, as I push these throttles full forward, that's when you're gonna really notice asymmetrical thrust if you're not applying the, the correct amount of rudder pressure. So make sure prop throttle full forward, gear up, flaps up, identify. Well, which engine is it? And this is key. This is key because a lot of multi-engine accidents have occurred as a result of securing the incorrect engine. So dead foot, dead engine, and now I'm going to verify. If How am I going to verify? I'm going to put my hand on the number two or the right throttle. I'm going to work the throttle back and forth. As you can see, there's no change in directional control. If I reach up here and grab the incorrect throttle, it's obvious. And that tells you which engine is operational and which one is in op. The next thing we're going to do now that the immediate action items are complete is we are going to decide, fix or feather. Now the decision to, to fix and feather is going to be based upon what phase of flight you're in. If you're in a critical phase of flight, that decision may be made for you. But if you're at cruise, your plane is performing fine, we've got plenty of altitude and whatnot, you can troubleshoot. So basically, that decision is also going to depend on what caused that engine to fail. Was it a fuel problem? Or is the pistons hanging out of the side of the cowling? That makes a big difference. So we'll make sure that it's reasonably safe to do so. On the flip side, some aircraft, and this is one of them, you get below a certain RPM, you can't feather anymore because of the pins and the pop up. So in our case, we've already ran through our troubleshoot procedures. We're going to run through our securing flow. And then we're going to run the checklist after we run through the securing flow. Start from left to right. Number two is identified. Number two prop lever is identified. We're bringing number two prop lever back to the feather position. I'm getting rid of a lot of drag. And if you can feel it, can't really make you feel it. It's considerably less rudder now. And I'm going to reach over and I'm going to grab the mixture, bring it back. Make sure that this is off. The mags are off. And now I'm going to just fly the airplane. Alright, we're at blue line. We've got the airplane configured as best as possible. And we're over the field. All is good. So we're under the feathering checklist. Bottle closed. Prop feather. Mixture off. Max off. Generator off. 
and gas off, and we've done that. And, and next thing we're going to do is just simply fly the airplane. Now, as you can tell from what I'm doing right now, I've raised the dead, so I'm banking slightly into the operating engine. If you'll notice, the ball is halfway cocked out to the left side of the inclinometer. This is a condition known as zero side slip. And yes, the ball was normally supposed to be centered on most airplanes, but on a twin, in an inoperative engine scenario like we're in, you want to be in zero side slip. And to illustrate the point of what's happening aerodynamically, I brought along a yaw string today. As you can see, the yaw string is almost streamlined with the longitudinal axis of the airplane. It's taking quite a bit of left rudder to keep it there. If I come off that left rudder, look at what happens to that yaw string. If I, on, the, on the same token, if I try to make that ball center, look at the ball as centered as it is right now. The all string is slightly off to the right. So we want to make sure that we're doing all the correct procedures that we need to do for this particular procedure. Um, and zero side slip, perfectly aerodynamic, the airplane is climbing. I'm going to bring some power back on the left engine and save the left engine. And that right there is how you handle this particular emergency. The light twin has considerably different engine out characteristics than say a King Air or a gyroplane. You know, it's, it's all different. So what you want to do is make sure that you master and truly understand emergency procedures for your aircraft. And that comes with good system knowledge and knowing the airplane and having those immediate action items down pat. So I consider that this maneuver is complete. At this time, we're going to unfeather and we're going to take her home. Due to viewer input, I'll take a moment and explain the broad differences of single engine versus multi engine prop functionality on a small piston powered aircraft certified under Part 23. Aircraft builders are directed to design airplanes to be fail safe for a worst case scenario. A large population of piston-powered single-engine airplanes are designed in such a way that a loss of oil pressure will result into a low pitch or fine position. The design for a single-engine prop is in such a way if a failure of constant speed propeller components occurs, the pilot will retain engine power and the capability to fly the airplane to an airport for a safe landing. In a multi-engine airplane, however, a windmilling prop can result into reduced performance and inability to fly on one engine. Therefore, the prop is designed to fail safe to the feathered position. In other words, oil pressure, which is provided by the engine, is not required to feather a multi-engine prop. Rather, the feathering process on this aircraft is via mechanical means with the assistance of speeder springs and compressed nitrogen in the prop of. In this training film, I performed the procedure slowly so that you as the viewer can embrace a better understanding of the why we as pilots perform actions in such a way. It's not a matter of if, but when an emergency will occur in your aviation career, and it's how you handle the situation that counts at that critical moment. You as pilot in command have the burden of responsibility to ensure that when passengers place their lives into your hands that you do everything you can to ensure their safety. Though the post-emergency occurrence actions require immediate actions, those actions must be methodical, smooth, and deliberate. No fast hands. Slow is smooth, and smooth is fast. Next week, we'll take a break from training, and I'll bring you along to a popular Texas fly-in campout with my bride. Until next week, fly safe, keep pressing towards your dreams, and so long.